this video, I'll be showing you how to run a protein shell. The idea of a protein shell is to separate proteins based on size. The best way to think about this is that the protein shell itself is a mesh through which the proteins migrate. And the smaller the protein is, the faster it can migrate through that mesh and the farther it will travel along on the shell. So in the end, larger proteins will be toward the top and smaller proteins will be toward the bottom. In the video, I walk you through all of the steps associated with that, and those consist of prepping the samples, loading the shell, and running the shell. The first step of preparing for a protein shell is to take the samples and add reducing buffer to them. The reducing buffer unfolds the proteins, coats them with a negative charge, which allows them to travel through the shell. I have isolated 25 microliters of four different protein samples. I have a 2x reducing buffer, which means I need to add 25 microliters of this into each of my four samples. Add it into here, and I'd like to use the pipette to already mix the sample and the reducing buffer. To prevent cross-contamination, I'm using a new tip for each sample. And I repeat the same process for the final two samples as well. And once all of the four samples are prepared, I will move them onto this heat block, which has been set to 95 degrees Celsius, and they'll stay in here for five minutes. After five minutes, we can come back and take our samples back out of the heat block. And just in case anything crawled up along the sides of the tubes, we, do, we put them in the centrifuge for a very quick spin. I put the first two samples here, and then I make sure to put the other two samples on the opposite side of the centrifuge so that it remains balanced. As always, add the lid. And close, and for this purpose, I'll just do a 10 second spin by holding the short button. As I mentioned, this helps sh make sure that all of the sample gets to the bottom of the tube. For example, if anything has been stuck to the lid or the sides, it is now pulled back at the bottom, and we have exactly uh, the amount of sample that we would like for the shell. Quick check, and now they're ready to be loaded onto a protein shell. Before the samples can be loaded in the shell, the shell needs to be set up. We have a brand new shell right here, which I can take out. There is a high side to this glass and a low side to this glass, and it's important that the lower side goes toward the inside of the shell running chamber. So this is the gel running chamber. I have placed the lower side toward the inside. Close it up. Place it into here. And the middle needs to be filled up with 1x SDS running buffer. Okay, this is now filled. There is a line on the outside here that indicates two gels. We're also above that line, so now we're good to go to load the gel. The first thing I like to load is the ladder, which will give us a reference point later to see how large our proteins of interest are. So I will load this one first. And after that, I will add our four samples in order. To load these, I place the tip just a little bit into the gap between the two glass plates, and then very carefully dispense the sample into the wells. Now that all four samples are added, I can add the lid, making sure to connect red to red. It's already connected to the power supply, set to 100 volts. I will hit run. 
check for bubbles coming up. If there are no bubbles, it means the gel is not running. But since I do see bubbles, it means the gel is running. And I'll now let it go for about one hour. This gel has now been running for one hour and the loading die has made its way toward the bottom of the gel, so it's time to take it out. Hit stop, disassemble the gel box, and remove the gel from the cassette. And being careful to contain all of the buffer within the gel running box so it doesn't get on the bench. And now that it's out, we can take a look at it. Like I already mentioned, the loading die has made its way to the bottom, and the ladder bands have nicely separated in lane one. From here on out, we can do a few things with this gel. For one, we can take the gel out of the glass cassettes and do a Kumasi stain to just look at the protein bands that we have. Alternatively, we could cut out the protein bands and submit them for mass spec uh, sampling, or we could take the gel out and do a Western transfer with this. Mm -hmm.